Alright, one of the four bolts on the back of the uh, new one don't line up. Apparently these are all equally spaced, but they're not going on. Good thing I didn't throw this one away because this is like some kind of a spaghetti nightmare. When I put the proportioning valve on the new one, I'm gonna have to look at this. I don't know what they got going on here. This is crazy. It's crazy how much I had to take out of it. Probably destroyed up there. So we'll get rid of this. I don't know what you're holding on to. Goodbye. This uh, protector slinky thing you put over the lines and I didn't have a double flaring tool. So I tried I I figured I'd try the tool loaner program at AutoZone and they give you this piece of junk. $38 deposit. Look at this piece of crap. It wouldn't stay centered when I'm trying to do the bubble flare because the castings are like so rough. It's not even centered. So I had my own from plumbing fittings. I had this set. Decided to use that instead. The only difference is I think this one has a finer, th no it's not a finer thread. This one you can put a wrench on because you need more force. Sometimes you just can't get enough with this hand lever thing, but I mean at least this locks on and it's got nice flat surfaces to keep it centered. So after a couple of tries I got the first double flare made. And, uh, started back here, which might have been a mistake. I probably should have started in the front, but at any rate, worked it around. Bought a tool but for making bends, but it turns out I just did it by hand. Stupid tool didn't work, as usual. So now I'm just feeding, feeding the slinky down and around. And uh, got to figure out where to terminate it. Like it went up through the body here. It's just fished out the top right now. I gotta come in the back side of this brake control here, this proportioning valve. Finally got one to work out centered. They keep walking off to the sides. So that's the bubble part. Yeah, I don't think that's going to slide too easily on there. Oh, these pads are I can hear a bearing noise. I'm sure the camera won't pick it up.
Got some uh, high heat barbecue paint. So in case I ever want to grill a steak on this hot break drum, I'll be all set. The rear brake drums, I ground off as much rust as possible with a flap wheel, sprayed it with cold galvanizing compound, and then some flat black high heat paint. So this wheel cylinder has to be replaced because the bleeder snapped off. And I tried drilling it out and it's shot. So for 10 bucks or $11 with shipping or whatever, I just got a new one from eBay. And I didn't even realize, it didn't say, but it's an AC Delco. Can't hardly beat that price. So that comes with a new bleeder. It even comes with a rubber cap. So it won't rust out like the last one did. Uh, I guess it doesn't come with the screws keep it in there so I'll have to uh, hope they don't snap off. Don't have a brake tool, a spring removing brake tool, so I'll have to struggle with it and uh, hopefully I can put it back the way it was. And then of course the hard part is always getting these little springs out. I think there's a tool for that too. <laughs> but. Getting them out is actually easy. Putting them back in is the tough part. Oh, and then we got this. So this is my method. I just push in, grab the center with a needle nose, give it a quarter turn. Now we gotta get the rest of these springs off of here. Okay, for some reason, one spring has a flat back and the other one has a smaller back. I don't see any point in that. Anyways. Okay, get some heavy duty pliers and I really have no same. idea what no, I'm left mumbling one is on about, the right one. but okay, so I guess one. it's just something I do while I'm trying to figure out things. Basically, I don't think we have to take everything apart. We just got to get this assembly off of here so we can work on that master cylinder. So. I believe this is the only thing keeping us from doing that. Okay. Now we should be able to pull the whole thing right off. Let's get that out of the way. Slide this around. Now, of course, we got. Spring down here from the brake, parking brake. Which 
should come off if you just twist it out of there. Yeah, the spring's holding it. Just gotta pull the spring back a little. And there she goes. the old one. Now we got to save these two pins. Okay, we got the two pins. I cleaned them up a little bit. Okay, so our assembly is still pretty much in one piece. Figured out the uh, parking brake actually hooks into this upper hole here. And then this crossbar with the springy in it goes between here and into the parking brake thingy. But I'm going to put that in after I hook this over the uh, axle. Alright, well now that the whole thing just fell apart on me, I can show you piece by piece. There's this spring backer with a pin in it. This spring goes on there, which presses against the brake shoe. It's a miracle it didn't fall out before. This little foot down here turns the uh, adjuster, self-adjuster whatever kind of adjuster you want to call it. Now this decides it wants to keep falling out. Then this spring goes over that hook there. And then that hooks over this top pin, which might not be easy to get back on. Uh, I might just put these two. I'm going to do this last, I believe pin from the back. Now the GoPro conveniently died in the middle of that, but just about done. Got the short spring on this side. This hooks in to this clip here. Spring from this side hooks onto that pin. I got these springs back in. Actually I just pushed the pin from the back, pushed this in with the front and I was able to rotate the pin, release it and boom. Okay, complete. Yeah. Got the nut wrist here, got the caliper off. Gotta clean this up, stick the new one on.
seal itself so I don't wipe it out. Okay, so I just got to grease that bearing, stick it in, tighten the castle nut. I got a kit came with new cotter pins and new caps and new nut. So it's pretty self-explanatory. I'm gonna tighten the nut till this thing starts to spin a little hard, then back it off to the next notch for the cotter pin. Cotter pin. Get in there. The light goes to Just make sure you don't cross the edges. <laughs> I think it's tight and then it goes a little more yet. Oh, yeah, that's definitely tight. Now back it off to there. They're not threaded, they should pop out. You got your new banjo bolt rubber cap, which is nice to have because they're always missing. So it looks like a nice unit. I'll throw this on there. I almost forgot it comes with this spring clip which you put on the piston side which seems awful small to stretch that for. I'm gonna say that's right. Well like I figured it doesn't want to stay on there because you gotta stretch it so stinking far After about 10 tries, brake pads keep falling out, spring keeps popping off. I got it on there, and I'm just thinking I'm going to put a little anti-seize lubricant on the threads, just for 3 8 Allen bolt, Allen key. So after that, I just got it. Take the fitting off, put the new banjo bolt with the new uh, copper washers on there. It takes care of that side. So everything's finally hooked up. Unfortunately, these brake lines, which are called the right stuff, uh, you can see how tight they are. <laughs> They're three quarters of an inch shorter than the originals. I don't know how they can call themselves the right stuff. Definitely the wrong stuff. So I got this leak taken care of, like I mentioned in a previous clip. I had to take a die grinder to smooth out the face of the caliper, which was never machined. Luckily, I got that. We got our new crossover line here with the little protector I don't know just to keep it factory put the little piggy tails on there it's kind of like I don't know if it's exactly like original but and we got our proportioning valve and everything is just like Up. 
as it should be, I suppose. So that's it, she's all done. I got this bag here because I keep smacking my head on the differential yoke. Thanks for watching.